Uh, this is a very different uh, manifesto, uh, and it is, of course, uh, global and it's cross-party uh, as an initiative. It brings together conservatives, liberals, Labour, Green, from the left and the right, members of parliament from Africa, Asia, Australia, from the whole of Europe, from Latin America, the USA, and of course from the United Kingdom. And what remarkably unites this diverse uh, group of parliamentarians is a shared commitment uh, to end the carnage that kills over three and a half thousand people every day on the world's roads. So I'm delighted to support this manifesto for road safety, which is the direct outcome of the second global high-level conference on road safety, which was hosted by the government of Brazil in November of 2015. At that ministerial meeting in Brasilia, a special event was held for parliamentarians, which I co-chaired with Deputy Hugo Leal of the Brazilian Congress. Also participating in that uh, unique event was Dr. Margaret Chan, Director General of the World Health Organization, and of course, Jim Fitzpatrick, our distinguished chairman today, who was uh, a former UK road safety minister. At that, at that meeting, it was recognized that parliamentarians can and indeed should play a decisive role in promoting road safety. Whether they serve as government ministers or uh, ordinary uh, legislators, they can support the adoption of the policies and laws that are needed uh, to make our roads safe. You know, their leadership can leave a lasting legacy of lives saved and injuries avoided. So in Brasilia, it was agreed to establish a network of legislators for road safety to serve as a platform to share good practice in road injury prevention policy and laws and to put pressure on decision makers in governments. So today, with the launch of the Manifesto for Road Safety, we're seeing the seeds that were planted in Brasilia bear fruit. And I'd like to congratulate both the World Health Organization and the Towards Zero Foundation for turning our aspirations in Brasilia into a reality. Now, this Manifesto launch is timely, not just because this is, of course, uh, the UN's Glo Global Road Safety Week, but because there's never been a stronger global mandate for action to tackle the appalling human tragedy and waste that is caused by road crashes across the world. In 2004, uh, I just left another job. I was invited by uh, the FIA Foundation by, by, by David Ward uh, to serve, uh, he said, just for a couple of meetings, <laughs> as you were uh, one of the famous lies in politics, you know, is, uh, I'll respect you course. even more in the morning, and uh, my check is in the post, and I'm here from the government uh, to help you, and the other one is, it'll only take one day of your time to do. Anyway, I was asked to serve as chairman of the Commission on Global Road Safety under the patronage of His Royal Highness. And our mission was to ensure that road safety would be recognized as a major priority on the global development agenda. As we know, um, in many ways scandalously, road safety was left out of the Millennium Development Goals despite being responsible for more deaths than malaria and tuberculosis. So working closely with the World Health Organization, we lobbied for the first ever global ministerial conference on road safety, the first ever uh, ministerial conference on road safety, which was held in Moscow in 2009. We called for the UN to launch a decade of action, which they did in 2011, and we demanded that road safety be included in the new framework for the sustainable development goals, which were to follow the Millennium Development Goals. Our efforts were quite remarkably successful. And in 2015, the UN adopted the ambitious target to have road, sa road, road traffic deaths and injuries by 2020, a very, very ambitious uh, program. So with the Commission's advocacy agenda accomplished, we wound up 
the work of the Commission at the Brasilia Ministerial Meeting. And this marked a, a significant transition for global road safety, a shift from lobbying to being recognized as a global development issue to becoming an area of active policy implementation. A big change from lobbying to implementation. And that's what we saw all along. And implementation is the urgent priority because we know, we actually know what works in road injury prevention. And we know that it's not enough, nearly enough, is being done. Indeed, on present trends, it's sadly the case that we're unlikely to meet the UN target for 2020. And as the manifesto argues, we must now make the case for an extension uh, to 2030. You know, as, as I've said on countless occasions and sometimes to the same audience, I make the point in my previous role as Defence Secretary and as NATO Secretary General, I knew all the statistics about war and conflict. And one of the staggering statistics is that in the 20th century, about 160 million people died in wars and conflict in what was the bloodiest century in all of human history. But if present trends continue, twice as many people will die in road crashes in the 21st century as died in all the wars and conflicts of the 20th century. And that really should be something that galvanizes people into action, and so far has not yet done so. But we know that there is abundant evidence of the effectiveness of enforcing laws on speeding, drink driving, the use of motorcycle helmets and of seat belts, and mandating vehicle and road safety construction standards. The problem is that too few countries are applying what we know actually makes road safe. That's why the creation of the global network and the launch of today's manifesto is so important because we need to redouble our efforts in the remaining years of the decade of action. And we need to mobilize political support to legislate for the effective enforcement of comprehensive road safety policies and laws. I'm pleased that the Manifesto for Road Safety endorses the World Health Organization's new Save Lives policy package, which sets out clearly the priority measures that all countries should be implementing. And it's very gratifying to see that the Manifesto recognizes that some of the FIA Foundation's key partners and campaigns are included in this. Our initiative on safe and healthy journeys to school has highlighted the appalling fact that 3,000 children and adolescents are killed or seriously injured in road crashes every single day. 3,000 children and adolescents killed every day. The equivalent of two large schools disappearing every single day. And this is the theme of an open letter that the Foundation is publishing today, which calls for the proven vaccine of of urban speed reductions to be widely and urgently applied. And as this, uh, this manifesto states, no one could possibly argue that children are responsible for this appalling tragedy. And so it must be the duty of governments and indeed the wider community to make roads safe for children. The manifesto also puts the spotlight on the critical issue of funding for road safety. You know, despite the best efforts uh, of the FIA Foundation and of Bloomberg Philanthropies, to whom I pay credit, road traffic injury prevention remains seriously underfunded. In recognition of this last year, the UN General Assembly supported the creation of a new UN Road Safety Trust Fund. The United Nations uh, Commission on Europe and the UN, uh, no, the uh, by UN ECE, what's UN ECE again? The European Economic Commission. On Europe, the yes, European yeah. Economic Commission on Europe. I used to, when I was at the Ministry of Defence, I once said I was going to have a war on acronyms. <laughs> <laughs> the Chief of the Defence Staff looked at me and he said, 
the easier to solve Bosnia. <laughs> <laughs> and it was. <laughs> uh, so the United Nations Economic Commission for Europe and the UN Special Envoy, Jean Tot, uh, are now working to establish the fund and are seeking an annual grant capacity of $750 million, a drop, a drop in the ocean. And with, and with catalytic resources on the scale, it's estimated that over a 10-year period, the fund could leverage an additional $262 billion for road safety investment, which we estimate could save uh, 5 million lives and avert 50 million serious injuries. So we hope that bilateral donors, philanthropies, and the private sector will contribute generously to the new fund. In comparison to the resources that have been devoted to many other comparable public health issues, that suggested investment in road safety uh, remains m modest in the extreme. And yet we also know that effective road traffic injury programs are highly cost effective. There's a real opportunity here for the private sector funding to play a much bigger role, especially from the automotive sector. Again, this is a, another area where the UN Special Envoy, where John Tott, also the president of the FIA, is playing an important role through his high-level panel on road safety, which I'm <coughs> pleased to serve and where he's lined up a whole series of important important people. It was interesting at the last meeting of the high-level panel in Geneva, we had the chairman of Coca-Cola, the chairman of Michelin, and senior representatives uh, from BMW and Volkswagen there. So we're not talking here about some sort of nominal panel of great people who simply add their name uh, to the uh, to the headed note paper, but people who are engaged, active, and want uh, to be in, uh, involved. Uh, the high-level panel strongly supporting the manifesto uh, for, uh, for road safety. And of course, I am supporting it not just as a legislator myself, uh, but as somebody who has had a personal connection. As, as Jim has said earlier in my career in the House of Commons, which was a long time ago, I helped to create the Seatbelt Survivors Group and campaigned uh, from the back benches to making the wearing of seatbelts uh, compulsory. I had survived a serious uh, uh, c uh, crash, and I survived because I was wearing a seatbelt. And this experience was all the motivation I needed to, to make sure that others uh, were given the same life-saving opportunity. And together with Barry Shearman, uh, who is campaigning in Yorkshire today, uh, and on a across party basis, um, including uh, Lord Nugent at the House of Lords, we eventually succeeded and in the 1983 seatbelt wearing has become compulsory and thousands upon thousands of lives have, have been saved. So in my own experience, parliamentarians the world over can make a positive and decisive difference to lives of their constituents and fellow citizens. I've been fortunate to serve in, in many uh, roles in Parliament, and few actually have been as successful and indeed as satisfying as my role in uh, getting the compulsory use of seatbelts. So I very much hope that today's manifesto for road safety will inspire other parliamentarians to become champions of road safety and help us, help us all to achieve a world free from road traffic casualties and fatalities. Thank you very much for your attention.